Thank you. Yeah. Some awesome worship today, right? Yes. yes. Awesome. Makes it harder on me. Eh? I got a pretty good <laughs> message now. <laughs> uh, the message today is, uh, is the joy of Christmas, the birth of the Savior. I got two quick announcements before uh, we get into the message. Uh, one, you are invited this Tuesday to our Christmas Eve service. God put on my heart to do a Christmas <coughs> Eve service. Uh, so many times, um, maybe you experience this, maybe not. Christmas is, it hasn't been about Jesus. It's about exchanging gifts. It's about family, and, and I, it, it is about family. It's about Joseph, Mary, and Jesus. And so um, I want to keep Jesus uh, the focal point this Christmas. So you're invited to our Christmas Eve service this Tuesday. It starts at 6, 6 to 7. And then the other announcement, it's, uh, as you know, we've been praying that God would open up a, the door for us this new year for our earlier service time. I want to thank everybody that's drove out here from Roseville, from the West Sacramento, from Antelope. I mean, we, we're coming from all over. There's some people here from Rio Linda, but most of the people that come here are from outside Rio Linda. So I just want to thank you for driving 20 minutes, 30 minutes to get here. God bless you. And so that shows that you're, you're dedicated, you're coming here for Jesus, even though it's an afternoon service. So we pray, like, God, if you have an earlier service for us, if it's in Rio Linda, great. If it's outside Rio Linda, we're open. Uh, Jesus was a traveling missionary. He went up north and, and south, all over, just preaching the gospel. And so when we came to Rio Linda, we, we were missionaries out in this community, and we've done that. I was counting... We have baptized 24 people in one year. I say we because you're the one that, you guys are the ones that invited the people. I didn't invite the 24 people. You're the ones that invited the people, and I was there just baptizing people. We're going to baptize two people today. And so I'm looking forward to Carla and Blake are going to be getting baptized after the service today. Okay. And so we've been praying and praying, God, do you have another location for us? And then just two weeks ago, I met a pastor, and he said you could have a 12 o'clock service for free. Like, what, what pastors say you could have our building for free? And, and we're, planning on, we're planning a mission trip to Israel in 2021. They're going on a, a, trip, a mission trip to Israel in 2021. And so uh, it is in Natomas. It's You guys know where Fry's is? It's on the other side of the freeway, right behind Taco Bell. If you come to our new church location, I'll get you a taco. I promise. You just want some? I'll get you two tacos. I'm down. But, see, here's my heart, guys. I want to reach lost people. I'll go anywhere to reach lost people. And so, if, if moving to a different location, if, if we can reach more people for that, then I'm willing to do that. So, I want you guys to join us. It will be. We're still going to be here for another four weeks, but the last uh, Sunday of January, we're going to be at our new location. I hope and pray that you will join us. So let me pray before we get into the message. Father God, I just want to thank you, God, for what you're doing here today, for the beautiful worship music, for all the beautiful people that are here. I pray that they can feel your spirit. Your spirit makes the difference in our lives. So we pray that the Spirit of Jesus will be with us this afternoon, throughout Christmas, and throughout the new year. We love you and give you thanks. Amen. 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 And so uh, last year we were, we were looking at Christmas lights. We always, how many guys like looking at Christmas lights? And so what, what kind of bothered me, we're looking at these Christmas lights. I'm going to show you two pictures. And we came across, not that picture, the next one. Oh. What's wrong with that picture? Where's the baby Jesus? Someone stole Jesus! <laughs> What's going on? All right, go to the next picture. That's, a, that's in my area. Where's Jesus? Someone, I, I don't know if they, they didn't take time to put a, a baby there or what, but I, and now it got me thinking that so many times, like in our world today, let's be real, people celebrate Christmas without Jesus. I don't know why. How could you celebrate Christmas without Jesus? I, the word Christ is in Christmas. I know the world is trying to 
to try to like make the holiday about something else, but it's really about Jesus. So I want to share a message about Jesus this Christmas. So if you have your Bibles, go to Isaiah 9, 2, please. If you're there, say amen. If you're not there, say help me, Jesus. It'll be on the screen, so if you can follow with me. Follow me, it's on the screen. We read here, The people who, walked, who walk in darkness will see a great light. For those who live in a land of deep darkness, a light will shine. You will enlarge the nation of Israel, and his people will rejoice. They will rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, and like warriors dividing the plunder. For you will break the yoke of their slavery and lift the heavy burden from their shoulders. If you got a heavy burden on your shoulders, I have good news for you. Jesus is ready to lift that burden off your shoulders. You will break the oppressor's rod just as you did when you destroyed the army of Midian, the boots of the warrior and the uniform bloodstained by war will all be burned. They will be fuel for the fire. Well, that's kind of scary. For a child is born to us, a son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders and he will be called what? Wonderful Counselor. He'll be called what? Wonderful Counselor. Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of what? Peace. His government and its peace will never end. He will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor Dayton for all eternity. The passionate commitment of the Lord of the heaven's armies will make this happen. Exclamation mark. The Lord has spoken out against Jacob. His judgment has fallen upon Israel. And the people of Israel and Samaria who spoke with such pride and arrogance will soon know it. The word of God. What's interesting is this prophecy was given when the country was divided. It was Judea and Israel. They became two separate nations. They didn't like each other. It was pride. They, they couldn't say, I'm sorry, let's, let's be one, one nation. But they had two different kings and, and they were fighting. And they're yelling and bickering at each other. There was no peace in Israel during this time when this prophecy was given. Has things changed in our world? Is there peace in the United States of America? Let's be real, they're still fighting and bickering. Are you a Democrat or are you a Republican? Are you conservative or are you liberal? Are you a Raider fan or a 49er fan? Woo! <laughs> 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 I remember one time I was wa watching Monday Night Football with my brother. I grew up a big Niner fan. Any Niner fans here? Hey. Oh, wow, a lot. <laughs> so, all the Ra Raider fans are a fight right now. <laughs> <laughs> and so my brother and I, we used to love watching football together. Actually, I didn't like watching football with him. But we, the Niners were playing the Cowboys. Monday Night Football, we're watching the game. And the game's just about over because, you know, of course the Niners are going to win again. And so there was like two minutes left in the game. And I was like, I'm happy because my team's about to win. I'm smiling. And he looks at me and he's like, why are you smiling? And he punches me. <laughs> I was like, man, I didn't know you were from Texas. <laughs> I, I share that because we, why, why is there so much fighting going over? I mean, it's just a game. It's just a game. And that's why I told my brother, it's just a game. But the scripture we just shared, this is no game. Life is on the line. If you come to know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, you're promised eternity. You're promised perfect peace. The, you, 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 you're promised an eternal father. You're promised a wonderful counselor. A, a good friend that's there for you during the good times. And even during the top dark times. Can I hear a big amen? amen. So we, we read that Jesus came to give us direction. Isaiah 9, 6. And he, the child, will be called Wonderful Counselor. Another translation, he'll be called Miracle Counselor. 
I mean, have you ever went up to a friend that you really trust, or maybe you looked up to somebody, you asked for advice, and they gave you the wrong advice? Like, and you went and did what they told you to do, and it got you to more trouble? But see, when God gives you advice, when he gives me advice, it's always the right advice. But there's, there's problems with this, this scripture. It says, when was the last time you went to a child for advice? I mean, I, sometimes I'll ask my son for advice. <laughs> But here, we're talking about Jesus Christ. He's no ordinary child. So when you go to Christ Jesus, He's going to give you the best advice. He's always going to give you direction. He's a wonderful counselor. Can I hear a big amen? Amen. And so Judea and Israel, they needed counsel. They they needed God to to be their peacemaker. Because there was no peace in Israel during this time. And we read in Isaiah 1, 18. Come, let us come together and reason together, says the Lord. God's very reasonable. He's like, let's, let's talk about it. I'm here. Let's, let's talk about what you're going through. Let's talk about your troubles. Let's talk about your sins. Just, just be real with me. God just wants you to be real with him. Let's, let's reason together, God says. Even though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. <coughs> I'm here to say this Christmas, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Because I need my sins to be cleaned and wiped away. Don't you? We, we all need God's forgiveness. Back then they needed God's forgiveness and today we need God's forgiveness. Proverbs 3, 6 says this, Acknowledge the Lord in all your ways and He will make your path straight. That's one of the scriptures I love. Yes. I, when I don't know what to do next, I just quote that scripture. Okay, I'm just going to acknowledge Jesus in all my ways, and he's going to make my path straight. Amen. Another translation says it this way. In all your ways, submit to him, and he'll make your path straight. I don't like that translation. That one's harder. It's easier to acknowledge God. It's harder to submit to him. And say, okay, God, not my will. Your will be done. Isn't that the challenge, to, to, to submit to God daily? That's what God's called us to do, to submit to Him every day. And say, okay, God, I'm going to do things your way, not my way. Israel was in a, a crisis during this time. They rejected God. They rejected the prophet Isaiah. They, they didn't want to hear from God during this time. And God promised that He was going to bring judgment upon their nation for rejecting the truth. Here's the good news. Jesus came to be our Savior. And He will be called Mighty God. See, God is the only one that has the power to save people. It took God Almighty. He had to come down from heaven through a baby. And so one thing I respect about God, and I'm I'm sure that you respect this about God, He can relate with you. He, He took on human flesh. He knows how how it is to lose a loved one. He knows how it's like to face temptation. He knows how it's like to go through pain and suffering. So Jesus came and he he took on flesh. He he was a baby. Not forever. He grew up and became a man. Some people still pray to baby Jesus. I hope you don't. We could pray to God because he's still there for us during Christmas time. And even after Christmas, Jesus is going to be with his people. Amen? Amen. Jesus came to save us. It reminds me of a story in Matthew 14, 22 about Peter. Uh, So one day they were in this boat and a storm came. They're in the middle of the Sea of Galilee. And everything was going good. And it's 3 o'clock in the morning. And now their boat's about to capsize. And... Out of the blue, you know, they see Jesus walking on water. You, and they go, it's a ghost! <laughs> I mean, how many of you guys like watching movies about ghosts? Anybody here? You guys, you guys like watch, watching scary movies? No. Oh, there's a few of you. <laughs> so these guys are freaked out. They're freaked out because they see this ghost. And they're like, oh no, it's a ghost. We're, we're about to drown. And now there's a ghost walking on water. And they're freaking out. And then... Peter's like, Jesus, is that you? And Jesus said, yes. 
come. And then Jesus said, all right, Jesus, Jesus, you want me to come and walk on water with you? Okay. And so Peter starts to walk on water. But what happens? He takes his eyes off of Jesus. And he starts looking at the storm. He starts looking at how deep the water is, and he begins to drown. And he was about to die. And all he says, Jesus, save me. And what did Jesus do? He came and saved Peter. I share this story because we were all drowning in sin. And we all needed a Savior. But whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This Christmas, you could find salvation. You could find eternal life. You could find the best daddy in the world. If you call on Jesus Christ, he'll be there to save you. Amen? Amen. Next, Jesus came to bring us home. We read in Isaiah 9, 6, and he will be called Everlasting Father. In other words, Jesus wants to have us he wants us to come back home and have a relationship with the Father. Our relationship was broken with God, but Jesus came to planet Earth so we could be reunited with the Father, so we could be one with God. Jesus actually says, when you look at me, you see the Father. That's pretty deep. So Jesus wants us to be with the Father for eternity. And the only way... He can make that possible is for him to go on the cross and to die for our sins. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever, whoever will believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Do you believe in Jesus? Do you trust in Jesus? I trust in him. I really believe that he died for my sins. I really believe he rose on the third day. I really believe he's coming back. Someday to bring judgment upon planet Earth. How many of you guys know that our Earth needs to be judged? First time he came as a baby, the first time he's coming as King, Lord, and Holy Judge. But Jesus came the first time to bring us back home so we could be with our Daddy, with our Heavenly Father. I'm reminded of the story of this young boy. He used to fight with his dad all the time and mom. And it got so bad that he, uh, he would run away sometimes. He got involved with drugs, hanging out with the wrong people. And he just did not get along with his father. And so when he turned 18, he's like, you know, I'm going to join the military. You know, I don't want to be home with dad no more. You know, I don't like his rules. I don't like being told what to do. So he goes into the military, and but his... His ways follow him. While he's in the military, he continues to do drugs and, and sell drugs. And he's, he's disrespecting the, the drill sergeant. And he gets a dishonorable discharge. And so he has nowhere to go now. He's like, maybe if I write a letter to my dad and I apologize, he'll accept me. And he'll take me back home. So he, he wrote a sincere letter to his dad. He said, Dad, I'm sorry for all the times I disrespected you and all the times I disobeyed you. Uh, I know that if you don't want me home anymore, I understand, understand. But if you somehow you accept me to come back home, tie a big red ribbon on the big oak tree in our backyard. And when I come back home, I, I'll know that that means I'm, I'm welcome. But if there's no red ribbon on the, on the oak tree, I understand I'm not wanted anymore. So he catches the train to come back home because the train will go directly behind his backyard and he can see the oak tree. And so while he's getting close to the house, his heart's thumping and beating. And he's, he's hoping that he'll see at least one red ribbon up there. And so he gets closer and closer and his heart starts pounding even faster. And he's hoping to see that red ribbon that he's still welcome home. And then he looks at the oak tree and he start, begins to sob uncontrollably. He couldn't take it because he saw the whole oak tree was full of red ribbons. That's the love of your father. That's the love of Jesus. He's saying, you're always welcome home. My blood has covered all of your sins. Come home to daddy. You are welcome home. You are welcome home. I don't know where you're at right now, if you're close to God or not, but I'm here to tell you this afternoon, you're welcome home. Come back to Jesus. Come back to the father. Lastly, Jesus came to bring us peace. We read, Isaiah 
shall, Isaiah 9, 6, and he shall be called Prince of Peace. How incredible is that? Israel had no peace, but God was coming to bring peace. America, right now, we might not have peace, but Jesus is here to give you peace. And one day he's going to bring peace, not just to America, but to the world, the Bible declares. We read in Isaiah 26.3, You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. And this applies to women too. You will keep her in perfect peace, she whose mind is fixed on you. So if you want to have perfect peace, fix your eyes on Jesus. I was talking to my friend Maximus, if he could come here. We were having coffee this week. I love hanging out with young people. And I was like, hey, uh, I was like, hey, uh, I, I just don't understand something about this scripture. It says you'll have perfect peace. But I know a lot of Christians, they don't have perfect peace. And then he answered the question just like that. And I want him to share his story if he could. Yeah. Give, a, give it up for Maximus. Um, like he said about a, uh, a week ago, that uh, he prompted me with that question: What, um, what do you need Jesus to be the most this Christmas? Your wonderful Counselor, your everlasting Father, or your Prince of Peace? And I said Prince of Peace, 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 right off the bat. And that's because, um, for me personally, my spiritual life, I always need peace. If there's no peace, I feel like I'm lost, broken. And then he asked me, what What's the time in your life that you lost peace, that you had no sanctuary? And there was many different scenarios that uh, popped into my head, but the one that stood out the most was uh, about a couple of years ago. I was indulged in this web of sin that I won't disclose what sin it was, but it's very common. And um, all I heard was the devil's voice. I didn't get off the boat like Peter did. All I saw was a storm, and I stayed in the boat waiting for it to capsize. I had no connection. It was like I was slowly inching into spiritual death. I never, ever, ever felt like I was going to remove myself from this web of sin. I was caught low. There were nights I would just lay on the side of my bed and just cry. Not tears of joy, but guilt. And guilt is not of the Father. Guilt is of the sin, of the devil. Because with his blood, you're blameless. And... Um, I really did feel like I was spiritually asleep or dead, one or the other. And um, there's a special someone that came into my life. She's not here right now, but she sent her regards. Mm -hmm. And um, she really, really helped me get back out of that web. But it's not her that I give the credit to. It's the Heavenly Father. Because you know, with his divine intervention, there's nothing that can overpower it. When his face is in front of yours, there's nothing else that exists. It's just you, and it's just him. And so that, that sin I kept up for a few years, but around 17 years old, I chose to live my life for God and chose to dig deep in his word. And ever since then, I've had that peace. And I've begged for more of it, begged for more of it. And I'll always have it. And you know why? It's because our God is the same yesterday, today. Amen. Thank you. So I have a question. Have you made your peace with God? Maximus made his peace with God. I remember there was a time in my life I didn't make my peace with God. I was living for myself. I knew what I was doing in my life was wrong in God's eyes. And finally I had to humble myself and submit myself to God and and confess my sin to Jesus. And I felt God's love with me. And saying, Jose, you are forgiven. I love you. I still believe in you. And I'm here to say that God believes in you. It doesn't matter what you've done. God loves you. He wants to have a relationship with you. That outlasts this lifetime. We read in Romans 5.1. We have peace with God through who? Through Jesus, because he's the one that went to the cross for you. No other person that you know went to the cross for you. It was Jesus Christ that went to the cross. He's the one that went on the cross to take on the world's sins. 
And now all we have to do as individuals is go to him in faith and say, Yes, Jesus, I accept your sacrifice. I accept that you died for me and that you rose for me. And I believe in this Christmas message that Jesus is our wonderful counselor. He is our Prince of Peace. He's our everlasting Father. What do you need from Jesus this Christmas? I'm here to tell you that he could give that to you. We read in Isaiah 6, 9, he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Could we stand? We could bow your heads and close your eyes. This is just between you and Jesus. If I get the worship team back here. So let me ask you the same question I asked Maximus. What do you need from Jesus this Christmas? Do you need a wonderful counselor? If that's you, raise your hand. A counselor is a friend who's there to help you during your dark times. If you need a wonderful counselor, raise your hand. Jesus will be that for you this Christmas. Do you need a mighty God in your life? Raise your hand. Because God, through Jesus Christ, came to fight your battles. God, through Jesus Christ, came to save you and give you eternal life. Do you need an everlasting Father? Maybe your dad wasn't there for you. I want to tell you, you have a dad that loves you, that will be there for you. Through thick, through thin. His name is Jesus. When you come to know Jesus, you'll come to know the Father. Do you need peace? Have you made your peace with God? There's no better time than today to make your peace with God. If you want to make your peace with God, say this prayer with me. Mean it with your heart and something's going to happen inside your soul. Say this prayer. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus I need you now. I need your love. I need your mercy. I need your forgiveness. Jesus, would you be my personal Lord and Savior? Teach me your ways. Help me to submit to your will. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. I ask in your name. And all God's people say, Amen. 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 Let us worship God.